So this is uh, trig integrals. That's the next section, the next type of um, substitution, like integration we're going to talk about. So here's example one. Let's say I have integral of sine cubed of x times the cosine of x dx. This actually could have been um, something from your, your u substitution section, but Here's what we see, and this is something you're going to be, you're going to always look for. I have an expression right here taken to the third power, and right next to it is its derivative. The derivative of sine is cosine. That's always good news. That means I actually have u, and I have the derivative of u sitting right next to it. So once I see that, um, I know it's a regular old u substitution situation. I'm going to have the sine of x equal to u. And so the derivative of sine is cosine x dx. So your u substitution, I have sine to the third, so that's u cubed du, uh, which gives me u to the fourth over 4. And so it's sine to the fourth x over 4, and that's your answer. Okay, so that's nice and easy, nice and happy. That's example 1. That's what we like to see. So here's example 2. Let's just go straight into that one. Example 2 looks very similar, uh, so let's say I have sine cubed of x, only this time it's times cosine squared x. Now we have a problem, and the problem is I don't just have something times its derivative, because although cosine is the derivative of sine, I have two cosines, so it's like I have an extra cosine. Um, so I have to do some fancy work, and these are the tricks. Um, of using trig uh, integrals. You kind of have to play with stuff. you got to make it look the way you want it to look. By the way, this exponent is 3. So, what I really want is exactly what I had in the problem above. If I can pull it down. Okay. I want a whole bunch of signs and then the derivative sitting next to it. Oh, man. I'm going to move that back up. So I don't want like some signs and then a couple cosines. I want either all signs with one cosine or I want all cosines with one sign. Um, so look at what happens when I do this. So I'm going to choose which one of these I want to be a derivative and which one I want um, to be the main expression. Since I have three signs right here, I'm going to take one of them out. So that would leave two of them. Then I have cosine squared, and I'm going to have that one sign. I'm going to tack it down here on the end. Okay, it can't just go away because you have three of them. And so the reason I do that is I'm going to say I want this sine of x to be my derivative of u, in other words. Um, so I'm going to save this to be du. We're not doing integration by parts, but it is kind of u substitution. Now, cosine's derivative is sine. So that means everything else over here I want to put in terms of cosine. Well, I've already got this in terms of cosine. I just need to change sine to in terms of cosine, and that's where you want to go to all those trig identities. You have sine squared equals a bunch of different things, but one of the things sine squared equals is 1 minus cosine squared, and that's what you're going to want to substitute as because now you see what happens is nothing's left but cosine, and then all that times your sine of x dx. So... Now what you can do, uh, you can leave that little sine x out there and distribute that cosine in here. Or you can distribute the whole thing, but um, I think it's easier just to leave the derivative tacked on at the end. So that gives me cosine squared x minus cosine to the fourth x. And both of those are being multiplied by the sine of x dx. So you're ready for your u substitution. That means you're choosing cosine to be your u, the derivative of cosine. Now the derivative is negative sine of x, so we're going to have to take that negative out, negative du. Oh, screwed everybody in pieces. So we have, that means we have u squared minus u to the fourth all times my negative du. So since it's negative 1 times du, I'm going to put that negative all the way in the front. 
So, by the way, it's du times both of those things. Uh, so now you can do your antiderivative. You get u cubed over u. I mean over 3, sorry. u to the 5th over 5. And then I have to multiply both of those times negative. So that gives me negative there, but it will turn this into a positive. And so now put your cosines back in. Cosine cubed x over 3 plus cosine to the 5th x over 5 plus c. So sometimes if it doesn't start off with just uh, an expression off by itself as the derivative, you have to pull one of those out. You have to kind of force it to look the way you want. So that's one example, or a second example.